confidence is in Jesus. Greetings to you, dear friend. I'm Reverend Peter Gaya from Redeemed Gospel Church, Ruiru. I want to share with you a message that is entitled Taking Responsibility to Build Defense Wall. The basis of our message will be the story of Nehemiah in the Bible. And our reference text is going to be Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. I know that all of us, or many of us who go to church, we know the story of Nehemiah. He was just an ordinary man. In fact, the Bible does not even call him a prophet. He used to serve the king. He was a butler who would give the king his drinks. But he had a burden. And how he took responsibility to build the broken walls of Jerusalem is very inspiring. The situation in Jerusalem was terrible. People had gone to exile and then they had come back. When they came back, they came back to a city which did not have walls. It means the city and the people were very vulnerable. They could be attacked by enemies at, at any time. But we see that Nehemiah had concern about the people and about the city and about this pathetic situation. He prayed to God to enable him so that he could go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and so that the people of God could be secure. We know that God saw the concern that is, was in the heart of Nehemiah. And he, respond, he responded positively. He had Nehemiah's prayer and he granted him favor so that he could rebuild the city wall. The building of the wall was not easy. The project was faced by considerable challenges and hindrances. We know, however, that Nehemiah was successful. And there are a number of reasons why Nehemiah succeeded in having the world rebuilt. I want to point out these virtues that Nehemiah had. Number one, Nehemiah was a sensitive person. He was sensitive in situation and he desired to solve problems or things that were affecting people. Number two, he understood the importance of depending on God. We see throughout his story that he was a person who was prayerful, a person who looked up to God, a person who knew that it is only God who could help in certain situations. He was a good leader, number three, with the ability to communicate well and to mobilize people. We see this in his story, how he was able to share the burden of his heart, and how he was able to bring people together so that they could work on this one purpose of building the world. He was God-fearing, as I've said, and he was prayerful. That is our point number four. And number five, Nehemiah had great courage. He did not only have great courage, but he was a good strategist. In life, there are times when our defense walls are missing. And when our defense walls are missing, we are left in danger and we are left vulnerable. Such situations may apply to us as individuals and as persons, but it could apply to us also as families, and it can also apply to us as a, as a nation. I know that currently across the globe, the attack 
by the coronavirus has brought feeling of helplessness and defenselessness. The virus is causing turmoil in our lives, both socially and economically. But the truth is, we cannot sit back without taking appropriate defense action. Under this attack or any other, we must rise and we must take responsibility like Nehemiah to see that things are able to stand and that things go well. I must say that it is time for us to demonstrate the virtues that Nehemiah had. And I said there before that these virtues included being sensitive. We must be sensitive in our area of, of operation. We must be able to know what is going on and whether things are working or not working, whether they are positive or negative, whether they are harmful or helpful. This is a trait that we see in Jeremiah. We must also depend on God. We must take matters to God because we know that he is able to help us in our situations. In times of difficulties, good leadership is very important. And we see Nehemiah having it. We must also be able to demonstrate good leadership. Good leadership in our families, good leadership in the church. Because this is the only way we can take people to the desired uh, destiny. And of course, Nehemiah was also a man of integrity. Situations require integrity. Situations require that people are genuine with themselves and that people have the fear of God. The Jews united under Nehemiah with everyone playing their role to have the world built. When you look at that story, you see that people took upon themselves to build certain sections of the world. And the people who took upon themselves to build the world were people of different status. We are told about priests arising and building a section of the world, business people, people who uh, were trading, people who are, you know, succeeded in doing normal business, they also arose and they built the section of the world. People ac uh, across the strata of status were able to unite and to build the world. And we are aware that in spite of difficulties and great challenges, the wall was built and it was completed. And in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15 and 16, is a very good conclusion to this story. In fact, this is what it states in this particular text. It says that, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul, in 50, 52 days, when all our enemies heard about this, uh, the surrounding nations were afraid and they lost their self-confidence because they realized that the wall had been built by the help of our God. This is a, a good conclusion, my dear friends, because if we depend on God and if we are able to sacrifice, to be sensitive, and to be able to stand for what needs to be done. At the end of the day, the wall will be built, and the wall will be completed. And our enemies and people who may not have required good for us, they will lose confidence. In fact, they will realize, after we've completed the work, that our God has been with us. Let us unite also. Let us take responsibility to build defense walls around our lives, 
around our families and around our, our, our nation. How do we build defense walls? We build defense walls through prayer. Prayer is important. I know that there are people who think that prayer does not matter. As we have heard, people feel that we should remain scientific and leave God out of our life. But we cannot do so because history and the Bible tells us that God delivered his people again and again because of prayer. He was able to make them achieve great things and to make great moves because they depended on him. My brothers and sisters, let us pray. Even in this current situation, we must continue praying the way Nehemiah and the people prayed. They prayed and when it, it was called for, they even carried their weapons as they guarded the city and as they continued with the work. I am certain that God will give us victory. At the end of the day, the wall, the defense wall will start. We hear about the danger and the fatalities that are being caused by this enemy called Corona. But we know when the wall is built, it will not progress. It will not go far because God is going to give us success. My brothers and sisters, we will overcome and our enemies will lose confidence. I want to believe that this message has found room in your heart, has inspired you, has encouraged you, has talked to you. And let me say, may God bless you even as we pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you even at this moment and even related to things that are happening in our lives at present. The things that may be challenging us as human beings, but we want to bring them to you. Even as we have been bringing, because we know that there is a solution that you are going to grant us. You are going to intervene in this situation through your might or through your revelation. And we are going to find a solution. I pray our Father that you will protect your people. You will be with them, you will strengthen them. And that the wall, the defense wall, will be built and completed. Thank you, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our joy, our hope, our confidence is in Jesus. He's our firm foundation. Jesus, you're my firm.